Hi, my name is Brandon Covey. I'm a CFI, a flight instructor, uh, and today I'm going to talk to you about uh, the basic things that we would cover during an introductory flight if you came in uh, for your first flight. We would, we're going to talk about the four forces of flight, we're going to talk about the components of lift, we're going to talk about the parts of the airplane, we're going to talk about the three axes of the airplane, and we're going to talk about controlling the airplane. Uh, so I have several things that I want to talk about here, several topics. The first one being the four forces of flight. This is sort of the fundamental level that we're going to build on uh, as you move forward throughout your training. So the first thing here uh, I'd like to talk about is weight. You, me, this little model airplane, which is representative of the plane that we fly here at Santa Monica. Uh, Flyers is a sport cruiser. It's 1,320 pounds. So what's that mean? That means you, me, uh, the fuel in the airplane, the airplane itself, all together, the maximum gross takeoff weight is 1,320 pounds. So the question is, how do we make that 1,320 pounds fly? Well, the idea is that we need to create 1,320 pounds of lift, okay? So we've already talked about two of the four forces. We've talked about the weight of the aircraft and the lift that needs to happen in order to make that aircraft fly. We have attached to this plane a 98.6 horsepower Rotax engine. Uh, it produces roughly 98.6 horsepower. It's attached to a three-bladed propeller that sends thrust in that direction. So the plane wants to accelerate and move forward. It will accelerate up to the point where drag, and you can feel drag right now. If you take your hand and move your hand through the air like this, you can feel the air resistance against your hand. The airplane will accelerate up to the point where drag no longer will, will no longer allow the airplane to accelerate any faster. It's almost like uh, throwing a baseball. You can only throw a baseball so fast, right? Eventually, the resistance of the air molecules are going to prevent the baseball from going any, any faster, just like an airplane. So those are the four forces. Whenever the airplane is in straight and level, unaccelerated flight, lift equals weight and thrust equals drag. All right, so now we're going to talk about the components of lift. Um, of the four forces that I talked about earlier, lift, weight, thrust, and drag, the one that I'm most interested in, you're most interested in, and I presume the reason why you're going to come in is because you want to learn how the plane flies. Lift was the force that was most elusive. Uh, so I want to talk a little bit about how we sort of stumbled upon the components that make up lift. So back in the uh, 16th and 17th centuries, uh, all the great thinkers were sitting around pontificating on the, the, the greater wonders of the universe. Uh, one of those guys you've probably heard of is Newton. I'm going to come back to Newton here in a second, um, but the, the way I like to start this is with this guy Bernoulli, Daniel Bernoulli. So Bernoulli had this, he was a Swiss uh, mathematician and physicist, and he had this pressure chamber. So I like to equate his pressure chamber to a garden hose, all right? So you've all watered the lawn or sprayed off the car and you have a garden hose and whenever you, you pinch the garden hose, right? Um, you notice that the water shoots out of the end a lot faster, right? So what Bernoulli did, if we can think about his pressure chamber sort of like that garden hose, is, is he introduced this high pressure fluid into the front of this pressure chamber. So we'll call this high pressure. Whenever that fluid reaches this pinch point, just like if you were pinching that garden hose, the fluid is accelerated, okay? It's accelerated through this pinch point. So we have an increase in speed here. Anytime fluid has an increase in speed, there's an associated drop in pressure. So if we sort of draw that out, we have a low pressure that is created as the fluid is in, in, increases in speed. Uh, what I like to do here is to basically erase all of this and what we're left with is a very very rudimentary uh, shape of a wing all right now what I want to do is redraw this now uh, so what's happening is so if I draw the wing like this what's happening is as we move forward as we accelerate as the plane produces thrust and begins to move through the air uh, it encounters more and more relative wind. All right, relative wind uh, strikes the, we call this the leading edge of the wing. Some of that relative wind goes high, 
some of the relative wind goes low. The wind that goes up and over the top of this, the, the, the curved, uh, they call it the upper camber of the wing, is accelerated. Okay, so just like in the garden hose, uh, anytime that fluid is accelerated, we have what is uh, a low, uh, anytime a fluid is accelerated, we have a low pressure uh, that is created. So here, we have a low pressure on top of the wing and a high pressure on the bottom of the wing. Uh, we've all been to enough birthday parties, we know that if you have a balloon filled with high pressure air and you let go of that uh, balloon, that the high pressure inside of the balloon is going gonna, is gonna to flow out and seek the low pressure uh, outside of the balloon. So the first component of lift, Bernoulli's principle, uh, pressure flows from high to low, we have a positive pressure lifting action. Okay, the second component of lift has to do with Newton. For every action, there's an equal and opposite, you know the answer, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Uh, so I just showed you Bernoulli's principle. I talked about how high pressure seeks low pressure as the air is accelerated up and over the top of the wing. Uh, there's another component of lift that's uh, as important to this whole, this whole process. So, but before I get into that, I need to talk a little bit about the, the components of the wing. So if we look at the side profile of the wing, right here we have the front of the wing. We call the front of the wing the leading edge. We call that leading. Back here we have the trailing edge. Makes sense. If we were to draw an invisible line between the leading edge and the, eh. if we were to draw an invisible line between the leading edge and the trailing edge of the wing, we call that the cord line. All right, so the next component of lift that I wanna talk about has to do with Newton. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. And the example that I like to give is whenever you're going down the highway and you stick your hand out the car window and you make it nice and flat, as you adjust that angle between the wind and your hand, you can feel, as you start to pitch back, you can feel more of that wind striking the bottom of the wing. You can feel it striking the lower half of the wing. You can feel it striking the lower, the lower half of your hand. The air bounces off your hand and is forced down, which in turn forces your hand up. So if I were to sort of draw it out, um, we call the angle between this cord line and the relative wind that I discussed earlier, we call that the angle of attack. Okay, the greater the angle of attack, the greater the lift. So if we sort of draw it out like this and imagine the wing is pointing up now, we have more of the relative wind striking the bottom of the wing and bouncing down. That's the action. The reaction is the wing rebounding up into the air. So that's the second component of lift. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. The greater the angle of attack, the greater the lift. The third component of lift also has to do with Newton as well. Uh, this one is a little bit, a uh, little bit trickier to understand, um, but if you follow with me, I think you'll get it. So we have the relative wind that strikes the leading edge. It's accelerated up and over the top of the wing. That means the air that goes under the wing is flowing a little bit slower than the air flowing over the top of the wing. The example that I give, if you and me were to go on a hike out in the countryside and we came up to a hill and I said, I'm going to race you to the other side of the hill, but I'm going to go up and over the hill and you're going to walk along this nice flat road. I'm going to have to run a lot faster to go up and over the hill than you are uh, to walk along this nice flat road. So thinking about the same thing, this air that's going up and over the hill, up and over the top of the wing is a high speed stream of air. It's striking this relatively low speed stream of air, and it's rebounding back like this. That's the action, okay? The, it's striking the air, it's rebounding. The reaction is the wing, uh, the reaction is the wing rebounding up into the air? Is no, the reaction's lift. Yeah, the reaction is lift. Okay. So say it, start from again. <laughs> uh, the, the reaction is the lift. The reaction is the lift of the wing bouncing back up into the air. Uh, so those are the components of lift. Okay, 
So now I want to talk to you about the parts of the airplane. Uh, we need to be familiar with these parts and, uh, before we can continue on with, this, the, with the rest of the discussion. Um, so here we have the body of the aircraft. We call that the empennage of the aircraft. If you look here, we have the tail section. We call this tail section the empennage of the aircraft. Uh, well, you know what these are. These are wings, all right? Another word for wings is the airfoil. Uh, and then back here we also have uh, the horizontal stabilizer and we have the vertical stabilizer. You can think about the horizontal uh, stabilizer and the vertical stabilizer as almost being like the feathers on an arrow. Uh, as, the, as the relative wind strikes these, uh, the horizontal and vertical stabilizer, it sort of gets sandwiched and provides stability as the aircraft flies. Mm -hmm. uh, the wings we know create the lift. Uh, we also attach to the wings we have our ailerons, all right? So when we move the stick to the left and to the right, it manipulates the, the aileron. Uh, attached to the horizontal stabilizer, we have the elevator. So when we push forward on the stick or pull back on the stick, uh, the elevator moves. And then we also have the uh, vertical stabilizer attached to that is the rudder. All right, we have pedals on the floor, so when we push those pedals, it moves the, uh, the rudder to the left or to the right. So all flying really is is redirecting lift. Uh, we're just manipulating the way that the air is flowing over the aircraft, and that in turn uh, controls the aircraft. So now I want to talk to you about the three axes of the airplane. I've introduced you to the various parts of the airplane, so we need to understand how to manipulate the airplane about the, the three axes. If you were to draw an invisible line, the wind out or in one wing and out the other. Uh, we would call that the, uh, the lateral axis. Uh, whenever I think lateral, I always think of football. Like if you throw the football out to the side, it's a lateral. Um, that's how I best remember it. I don't know if that'll work for you, but it works for me. Uh, we, we pitch about this lateral axis, okay? So whenever I pull back on the stick, my elevators rise up like this. The relative wind strikes the top of it and then forces the tail down, which in turn causes the, the nose of the plane to rise up into the sky. We call that pitch. All right, we pitch about this lateral axis. If you were to draw another line that goes uh, from the back of the plane, the tail of the plane, out the nose of the airplane, uh, that's our longitudinal axis, all right? So we roll about the longitudinal axis. If I push the stick to the left, the left aileron goes up, the right aileron goes down, uh, the relative wind bounces off the top of the left aileron and the bottom of the right aileron and forces the plane to roll to the left. When I push the stick to the right, the right aileron goes up, the left aileron goes down, and the plane rolls to the right. Uh, so that's, how we, that's what we do about around the, the longitudinal axis. We roll about the longitudinal axis. Now there's another axis. If you draw a line, Imagine a line coming from the top of the plane and out the belly of the airplane. That's our vertical axis. Uh, when we push on the, the rudder pedals located on the floor, that manipulates the rudder and that causes the plane to yaw. All right, so it yaws to the right or yaws to the left. As we push on the right rudder pedal, it makes the, the nose pull to the right. We push on the left rudder pedal, it makes the, the nose pull to the left. Uh, those are the axes of the airplane. Where all of the axes meet, we call that the center of gravity. Uh, the center of gravity becomes very, very important a little bit later on in your training when you learn about weight and balance. Um, but uh, for now, that's, uh, those are the concepts we need to understand uh, involving the three axes of the airplane. Okay, so now I want to uh, talk to you a little bit, do a little bit of review about controlling the airplane. Uh, now, I mentioned earlier the axes of the airplane, uh, the lateral axis, the longitudinal axis, and the vertical axis. Uh, now, I want to talk to you about a little bit more about the intricacies of that. So, one of the things that you need to understand is that the, the horizontal stabilizer here uh, can almost be thought of as an inverted, an inverted wing. Uh, it's mounted here to the empennage with a, with a slightly negative angle of incidence. That's what we call the angle. Uh, that the manufacturer actually mounts uh, the um, horizontal stabilizer, the wing to the aircraft at. Uh, you can almost think of it like the spoiler on a, on a race car, right? Uh, where, whereas the wing is producing lift 
uh, in this direction, the horizontal stabilizer uh, needs to produce lift in this direction. Uh, some of these horizontal stabilizers too have a slightly rounded bottom and a relatively flat top, all right, which also helps produce a downforce on the tail. Um, so as we're flying along and we want to pitch up, all right, uh, we're going to pull back on that stick. So as we do that, the elevator starts to come up like this, all right. Uh, think about this like the like the wing, okay? Uh, we're increasing the angle between the leading edge of the horizontal stabilizer and the trailing edge of the elevator, which is increasing lift down towards the ground. And that's going to cause that nose to rise up into the air. As I push forward on the stick, the elevator is going to go down like this. The relative wind strikes the bottom of the elevator and in turn forces the tail up and the nose down. So that's how we that's how we pitch, okay? And in this plane, you need very, very light controls. Uh, two fingers and a thumb. There's really, you don't need a lot. I see a lot of people really gripping onto the stick, white, white knuckles. Uh, if you do that, you're gonna over control the airplane. This airplane needs very, very small inputs. Uh, you need to be very gentle in the way you control the aircraft because it's very responsive. Uh, as you push the stick to the left, I mentioned earlier, uh, the left, aileron will go up, the right aileron will go down. Okay, so we're essentially increasing that angle of attack between the leading edge and the trailing edge of the aileron as we push, uh, the, as we push the stick to the left or to the right. Uh, that's going to manipulate that flow of air and also increase lift. So if I push the stick to the left, I'm increasing lift on the right wing decreasing lift on the left wing, uh, that's going to cause the airplane to roll to the left. If I push the stick to the right, the right aileron comes up, the left aileron comes down, uh, we increase lift on the left wing, uh, the, the uh, lift goes down on the right wing, and we turn to the right. Uh, so that's how we roll, and remember we roll about that uh, longitudinal axis. Now, just like when you're driving down the, uh, down the highway uh, and you go and you exit, take an exit ramp too fast, you feel yourself being thrown against the, the door in the opposite direction. You can feel that pressure pushing you in the opposite direction of the turn. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Uh, in an airplane, the tail would have a tendency to want to skid out, okay? So one way that we help to control that, to keep the nose and the tail in alignment is with the rudder pedals on the floor. Uh, so the way I teach people to remember this is aileron and rudder go together. As we roll to the right and use a little right aileron, we're also going to push on the right rudder pedal. That's going to keep the nose and the tail in alignment as we make that turn to the right. Now if we turn to the left, we apply left aileron, and we're also going to apply just a touch of left rudder and that's going to help keep that nose and that tail in alignment. Uh, if, we, if, if the tail slides out, we call that a skid. If, a, if the tail moves to the inside of the turn, we call that a slip. Um, so that's, that's really how we manipulate all those different controls uh, to keep the airplane doing exactly what we want it to do. Uh, we're either climbing, descending, uh, making, uh, making turns, or trying to keep the airplane in straight and level flight.